morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when or where you might be listening to this, the fifth episode of the Huron Christian Church podcast. Once again, I'm Matt Sibley, joined by the Huron Christian Church team. Here today with us, we have Al Wager, Brad Carell, Luke Muller, and John Blum. Uh, looking to talk to you today about discipleship. But before we get into that, if you hadn't had a chance to see our previous episodes, I suppose listen to our previous episodes, go ahead and check those out on our YouTube channel. Once again, we're still working out the bugs and getting that uploaded to the different podcasting platforms. Uh, so once we work out the kinks with that, we will have that for you. But, uh, but yeah, go ahead and check those episodes out on YouTube. Our most recent episode was with uh, Diamond Willow Ministries out of Fort Thompson. And we talked a lot about what, uh, what good things God has going on over there, the effect that uh, COVID's had on their community and how they've been able to use that as a, as a teaching moment, how they've been able to use that to bring people closer together and just how they've been able to find God in the midst of uh, what has been a tragedy for, for many people. And so if you haven't had a chance to see that episode, um, I do believe we have that up, the video on that one up, so you can actually watch that episode. Go ahead and give that a watch or a listen, and uh, we think that you'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, just a fair warning, it is um, about an hour, so you might have to watch it or listen to it in two sessions. And so if that's the case, that's not a problem either. But so getting into today's episode, we're going to be talking about discipleship. And, and honestly, here we are. It's Wednesday, April the 7th, uh, just a couple days removed from our Easter Sunday services where we celebrated the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and honestly, it's a, it's a perfect transition to, to talk about discipleship because that's the next step, right? Uh, once Jesus uh, was resurrected, uh, that was what we as believers have been called to do is take that next step and begin the journey, uh, the journey of discipleship. And so it's just going to be a great conversation and again, perfect timing. And to be honest, there's no better person here at this table to talk about discipleship than our discipleship minister, Luke. So Luke, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you have going on and what discipleship is to you and how you uh, what approach you take to, to your role as the discipleship minister here at Heron Christian Church. All right, thanks, Matt. Um, there's a lot of different perspectives when it comes to discipleship um, that people have, and I, and I think that's important to note because it's not just a one-size-fits-all. Everybody's different, and um, so, I mean, everybody's going to approach this differently. So, put simply, discipleship is just um, devoting yourself to a teacher and trying to learn um, what they're teaching, trying to become like them. And so obviously for the Christian, this means becoming like Jesus and learning his teachings, um, obeying um, what he says. And actually it's interesting when you get to looking um, at Scripture, during his earthly ministry, the term disciple was the most frequently used term to describe Jesus' followers, actually used 262 times to describe the followers of Jesus. Um, and so when we get to looking at discipleship, it's just we're, we're looking at this process of becoming committed followers of Jesus. And um, so personally speaking, my opinion is we should be pursuing this by following what we call spiritual disciplines. Um, now, when we get to looking at spiritual disciplines, there's a whole bunch of different ones um, that we can talk about, but today I would just like to dive into a few that I have um, selected from Lifeway Resources. So, uh, you want to dive into those? Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think that's a, a great place to start, you know, and it's just a quick one-off, you know, it's, we get in this zone sometimes where we think that once we take that step to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we're done, that we're finished. And, you know, I mean, that, that to me is something that, that I've always, uh, you know, it always kind of, I'm taken aback by, you know, we always feel like that's the moment where we've reached the finish line and, and here we are. But the things that you have to talk about here, I think are going to be really important for, for a lot of people to hear because, uh, you know, in, in many ways they don't, they don't know. They, that's what they think. That's maybe what they were taught. And 
and we have a great opportunity to learn a little bit differently. Yeah, I'm glad you bring that up because that's only half the battle. Coming to to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, obviously essential part of the Christian faith, but that's that is not the end by any means. Um, that's just the beginning. We spend the rest of our lives growing and maturing, and so the the process of growing and maturing and becoming like Jesus and becoming holy is not an easy process, especially in today's culture when there's so many things that are trying to take our attention away and they're demanding our commitment, but we need to be intentional and focused, and if we do, if we are, um, then we can be more like our teacher. And so, you know, a lot of people say, I want to be like Jesus, that sounds fantastic, how do I do that? (laughs) Um, And so, like I had mentioned, one way is to engage in spiritual disciplines, and so um, some examples of these might be meditating, praying, fasting, giving, evangelizing, spending time with God. It'll depend on who you ask, but th- there's all kinds of them. So today I just want to share this, this list that I have from Lifeway Resources that will help people listening to get started in the process. So the, um, and, and you guys are more than welcome to um, uh, contribute to these as well and maybe speak from your past experiences that you have with these different things or any tips that you would give to people as they're trying to engage in these disciplines. So the first one is abide in Christ, and that's um, also, we could call it hang out with Jesus. (laughs) Um, We read in John 15, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So what does that look like for us? Well, it looks like going to church on Sunday, setting aside a specific time and location for a regular quiet time. Um, It looks like fasting. It looks like praying. Uh, Do you guys have any thoughts on that one? I think that's probably the, the, maybe a misconception of of many is that um, that that routine or that discipline um, is so vital for us to continue that, to, to be able to spend time. Like what we would spend time with our friends or spend time with our family, it actually means spending time with. And so setting aside that time to spend that time. So that's why church, that's when I try to encourage people to, yeah, come to church. They're not just coming for me. They're, they're coming or to spend time with me, although that's good um, because I need that. Um, and they may need that from me, but it's also spending time it, knowing who Jesus is, finding opportunities to learn more and more about who he is so that we could apply that life to our life. And the only way we can do that is by spending time with them. We, it, we, if we're just taking somebody's perspective, if we're just taking things from outside sources or whatever, it, it looks so different and that's why to be a part of something that we're actually doing it on our own and studying it from our own, that, that is vital. Otherwise, it kind of gets um, lost in the translation. Um, one thing that I um, heard, and I can't remember exactly where the foundation of it was, but, um, the, but the, the idea comes across in how we are related to Jesus, how we have that relationship with him. And... Um, some of us are more raised in church, or some of us are have a little bit of Jesus in us, and it's kind of like used as like an inoculation or immunization or vaccine, because we can use those terms right now. I think everyone has heard those recently, right? But sometimes we just get a, a little bit of that in that we become immune to him, and um, we're supposed to catch it. We're supposed to do all we can to, to get Jesus a part of it. Just keep filling um, instead of just the, the little shots of, of it. Um, and so I think that's the, the vital part, the consistency and to continue to do that. That's why we want people to come to church. That's why we want them to get involved and, and study. It's, just, it's to get to know who Jesus is. Yeah, and I think one of the drawbacks to this one, when I talk to, to people, they tell me they struggle with the tangibility of God. Well, I can't see him. I can't hear him audibly, and those types of things. And so that is um, why a lot of people, I think, struggle in this area. They think, well, I can go eat out with my friends, or I can go um, play games with my friends or my family, but I can't do that with Jesus. And I say, why not? You can do that all. You can do everything with him because he's everywhere. 
And so, um, but, but I think this is just one of those things um, you have to just put this into practice, put this into practice consistently over time, then talk to me and see um, what you think about this. Um, the next one that I have is, li- it might come as a surprise, live in the word. <laughs> uh, read the Bible. Jesus said in John chapter 8, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So this might look like memorizing passages of scripture. It might look like taking notes during our sermons and taking notes during the studies throughout the week. Um, it might look like writing down the passages that you hear in those um, those times, and then going home and looking them up. And as you're reading scripture, um, it's always useful to have a commentary or a study Bible or something like that where you can just have that next to you, and if, if you come across something that you don't understand, that can aid you in, in understanding. So the, the goal here is to establish a regular time for personal Bible study. And if you're married, I encourage you to do this with your spouse. If you have kids, I encourage you to do this as a family as well. Um, if, you're, if you're single, participate in an ongoing small group or ask your friends if they'd like to meet somewhere regularly and read the word um, with you. You'd be surprised how many people are actually open to doing that. If you just ask, hey, can we meet and go through the book of James? And so each time you meet, you, you go through a chapter or something like that. The, I mean, you can just be creative. Put sticky notes of verses on your mirror with things that you're struggling with or things that you need encouraged with. And each morning when you're getting ready, you see those verses. Again, the goal here is to make sure that you get into the Word. Uh, The third thing is to pray. Each day we are relying on God, and Jesus knew that. In fact, I love the way that he words it. He says, when you pray... Do not be like the hypocrites who pray to be seen by the others or like the Gentiles who think they will be heard for their many words. But what I want you to catch there is the phrase, when you pray. Jesus implied that his followers um, would be people who prayed. And so if you're trying to be like Jesus and you're not praying, it's like running a car on empty. Um, we're We're called to spend time praying. And when you're praying, praise God. Thank God. Um, Confess your sins and ask him to help you overcome temptation. Ask for things that you want and ask for things that you need. Ask God um, to help help the people around you, the people that you know. The goal of this discipline is for you to pour your heart out on God and to be receptive um, to his will moving forward. As Peter says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God loves each one of us. He created each one of us. He cares about us and wants to have a relationship with us. And when we pray, we get to ask him to, um, for, for help living out this life that he has called us to live. And we get to, uh, for lack of better words, we get to vent to him (laughs) about what's going on in our lives and, um, and, and facilitate that relationship. And also Al, uh, if you, if you would just share a bit about that Tuesday morning, uh, prayer group. Yep, I've always um, had that desire to to pray and to pray consistently and to pray pray without ceasing, and that's always been a not difficult for me to desire that or want that, but it's difficult to put, actually put that into practice. And so I always feel like every time I've had help or people encourage me or or have something to look forward to, um, either during the day or you know weekly. It gives that opportunity of developing habits and good habits and, and helps us grow in that. And so that's one of the, the things um, uh, quite a few years ago, um, 19 um, years ago, I suppose it would have been 19 and a half years ago, um, Candy Cooey and I um, got together on, on Monday mornings. I think we started out with, um, met at the Crossroads Hotel downtown and in, in, in their um, restaurant and and we began a, a prayer time um, with, and inviting the church to come and be a part of it. And, and so every Monday morning for many years, and then we switched it to Tuesday mornings, and it went from Marlon's restaurant to, to Colburn's restaurant, back to the, the Crossroads restaurant, and then we finally moved it to the church and, and met there. And we met all the way until last um, March, uh, until COVID kind of hit pretty hard, and so we... We, we stopped meeting on a regular basis. Um, 
Again, we have changed it then to Tuesday mornings. Well, just a, a few, maybe a month or so ago, um, just missing that, and again, missing that, that consistency. Um, desire to have people um, be a part of that again. And, and so a Tuesday mornings, um, we just did it uh, where anybody who wanted to be a part of that could sign up. Um, then each week we send a list of, of prayer needs and prayer concerns. Some are just specific to the group that signed up. Um, but anyone's welcome, um, even if you didn't sign up, any, any, everyone's welcome to, to pray. But then on Tuesday mornings from 7 to 9 o'clock, we've kind of set aside as a specific time to pray together. And it's just a, a unity of prayer. And, and so we try to update uh, again, try to remind, try to encourage um, people to be involved in that. But just, uh, again, a, a routine. Hopefully soon we'll get back to be more comfortable to meet together and to pray together again. Um, have that opportunity as well, but that's that's just one of one of the times you know during the week, and again a, a way to help us um, develop those um, routines and disciplines in our life. That's going to help us to to continually do that on a daily basis and then on you know on an hourly basis and every minute. Um, pray without ceasing. You know, Luke, it's <clears throat> it's interesting. You know, as I was listening to you talk about how how to pray. Uh, you know, we pray every night before we eat, and actually, it's it's Reagan and, and Teddy that do the the praying at home. And when Reagan first started praying, uh, it was always funny because she'd always talk about what happened at daycare that day. She'd always talk about if Teddy was naughty or what they did, or you know, just things like that. And my my gut reaction was, oh, like that's not what we talk about, you know, when we pray. But you know, the more and more. I, I thought about it, and I mean, after you know, hearing what you have to say as well, you know, it's just it's one of those things that it's actually almost a teaching moment for me. Where, you know, sometimes the things that we pray about, just having a conversation with with God. I mean, He knows everything that we're thinking and everything that's on our hearts, anyways. And so, you know, just that having that genuine openness and not closing yourself off from praying or saying, you know, what what's on your mind simply because you think He already knows it or you should pray you know, a certain way, I should say this, this, or this, and that's not the case. You know, it, it's a matter of being genuine and being honest and open with God. And so just kind of funny, you know, thinking about that and thinking about how, you know, Reagan prays at, at dinner. And, and so uh, I definitely can appreciate uh, what you have to say. Yeah, there. absolutely. Um, uh, when I was at, in at ministry at a church when I was going to college, I was doing youth ministry, and there was these new kids that were funneling into the church and going to, to youth group, and it was just so awesome to listen to them pray because they hadn't grown up into the church and they hadn't um, caught up, you know, they, they didn't have the vocabulary that we think of when we think of this is the words you have to use when you pray, and they didn't, they didn't know how to start, they didn't know how to go about it, and they didn't know how to end, and I loved their prayers. They were just... Um, open and honest with God. They said what was on their heart. That's all they knew. They, they didn't know the structure. And so I just loved hearing that. And so, yeah, absolutely. People just think that if I follow this certain structure, then God's going to listen to me. I mean, that's, that's not going to happen. God wants you to be genuine. He wants you to be honest. I mean, if you want something, tell him. What good does it do for you to try to hide it from God? He already knows what you want. I mean, if you want an Xbox, tell him. But it, he can say no. <laughs> right. But I'm just, I, yeah, definitely it's important to be open He does. With he him. says no quite a bit He's to that. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or is that your wife? <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, no, Al, I, I, going back to the Tuesday morning prayer group, when I came and did my internship here, I was actually part of that prayer group and um, meeting every Tuesday morning at the restaurant. And I just, I mean... When I had gone back to college after the internship, that was one of the things I missed the most. I just was finding myself going, oh, it's Tuesday morning. I'm missing something. And I did miss that time that we had to pray together. And that kind of leads me into the last discipline that I'll mention, which is fellowship with believers. Um, while Jesus was praying, he said uh, this in John chapter 17, I am not praying only on their behalf, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their testimony, that they will all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. I, I pray that they will be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, encourage one another and build one another up. And so 
Um, when, we, when we look at this, we're just looking at relationships and getting together. And so practically speaking, this might look like repairing relationships with friends and family. Uh, this might look like making a list of the people who hurt you and asking God to help you to forgive those people. Um, this looks like participating in small groups, Sunday school, and other Bible studies. This, this looks like going to church on Sundays and spending time with other believers. Um, and so, you know, I just want to encourage people in this area, don't be afraid to start new things. Don't be afraid to ask people if they want to go bowling or if they want to be part of a small group together or if they want to go through a study together or anything. I mean, the goal here is just for people to get together, to do life together, to encourage each other and to help each other through all the problems that um, come up in life. And so um, maybe for for parents, this might look like going to a retreat or a workshop on, on parenting or on marriage. Um, so I, I just, uh, John, I, I just want to ask you to share a little bit about the small group um, that you're doing and the opportunity people might have. to. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, I, I just a few, I guess it would be months, a few months ago, I just wanted to do a small group. Um, and I, I don't like, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a super, like I have a very planned out vision for the small group, but as far as the practical structure of it, basically my, my goal is to get a few people together and talk, just talk, have conversations about God and the Bible. I mean, that's, that's at the very skeletal part of it. That's what it is. I mean, so like, even if we get off of so we're going through a book actually right now but even if we were to get off topic from the book but we're still talking about the bible or or something about god then to me that that that's fellowship i mean that's biblical fellowship is when people are talking about heavenly things you know things about things that are in the bible it's okay it's fine to talk about sports and the weather but um that's not biblical fellowship i mean it's it's needed sometimes but so anyway, that that's my goal, and so we, yeah, we've been meeting, we try to meet once a week um, at different houses, different places, depending on who's available. Um, a lot of the time, I mean, it's hard to schedule, like, every week. Sometimes we just wait two weeks because so many people are going to be gone, which which is fine. So, I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of freedom in that, I guess, just kind of, I, I mean, leaving leaving a lot of that up to other people and so yeah, we're we're just going through a book right now. We're just reading a couple chapters every week and then discussing discussing it. The book is called uh, Letters from a Skeptic, and it's this. I'll just do a quick rundown. It's it's this college professor that's writing letters to his skeptical father, who is not a believer. The father, and the father is just asking him all these really difficult questions about the Christian faith and about God and. And they're all very good questions and very valid. So the the guy's responding. He's he's an apologist. Like he has a, I think he has his doctorate in apologetics. So he's just responding to every single one of their, one of his questions. And then at the end, the father ends up getting saved. And so it's just cool knowing that end result. Um, and just talking spoilers. about spoilers. <laughs> yeah, spoilers. <laughs> That's a happy spoiler, though, right? So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. If anyone is is interested in that and you can certainly certainly talk to me yep and so. and if anybody is also interested in um leading a small group or leading something relating to fellowship uh, go ahead and talk to one of us and we'd love to help you get that started it's just important to be in fellowship with other believers and i hear people say all the time once they do these types of things they say wow i never realized somebody else was going through the same thing i was and there's just this, this camaraderie and, and um, companionship that people have, and they're able to help each other through the different struggles and phases in life, and they're able to laugh with each other and, and just have a fun time together. And that's really important when it comes to discipleship. I mean, you see throughout Scripture Jesus spending time with his disciples and making that important, and so we should as well. Um, when we get to looking at all of these spiritual disciplines, we can get up, we can get caught up into what I call checklist Christianity. 
Um, but that's not what these are designed for. They're designed to help us to spend time with Jesus and to be more like him. Um, the key to growth will be God's work in you as you intentionally seek, for, seek his kingdom first. Um, in Matthew chapter 6, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And so these things aren't just a checklist. Okay, I did that. Now I'm a disciple. Um, these are designed to help you facilitate a relationship with Jesus. And anything that helps you do that um, is, is what I would consider to be part of discipleship. One thing that I would add, too, is <clears throat> first a, a quick thank you to uh, people like you and John and obviously Alan Brad as well, because I think so many of us are willing to follow but don't know where to go, and we need people to lead. And to have people like you guys uh, you know, start up those types of small groups is a big deal because you get a lot of people that, again, are willing uh, but are, aren't able to lead themselves, don't have that understanding or that footing to do those types of things. And so having that, uh, I think, is, is incredibly important, and it's something that, that we all need. I was just going to add to that, Matt, is that we were all followers too, and it was because we stepped into those positions that helped us to develop into those leadership roles and that's what, that, and we see the, the benefits, and a lot of times that's what we're going, come on, be a part, be a part. You know, we're trying to encourage as many, and we just say, once you do that, you're going to, you are going to see something a lot different. And because we've gone through the same thing, we had the same feelings, um, you know, really, um, before I um, stepped into this role, um, or step, came over to the church um, 20 years ago uh, as the family life minister, I was... I was part of other churches, but kind of on the skeletal part, you know, just attending, sing, you know, quite a few times at a worship leader or whatever, and did some of those type of things, but not, not all the time. If we didn't want to go to church that Sunday or to that church, we just went to somewhere else, you know, not really committed to anything. And so it wasn't until we got here and had that opportunity just to commit and see the, the awesome perspective that that brings um, being committed specifically to a group of people and getting to know them people that are different than us even you know um, and that's one of the things that's so special about the church that we have here it's it's not just one big fan we are a big family but it's not um, a blood family here um, that that that's all that's here it's it's a representation of our community and so when we come here we got a whole bunch of different people um, and th that makes us unique that way, and it's and it's special because there's somebody for everybody. I mean, that's the we can have opportunities to grow in our relationships with people. Even it, well, if we haven't found somebody with similar likes or similar, um, uh, uh, I guess, hobbies and those type of things, y you will find them eventually here because there's there's a lot of different groups and a lot of different. Um, a lot of different people here. So that that's one of those things. We started where everyone else is. It wasn't just something that, oh, they were always in this, always had this idea of leading. No, we started at the same place, and we're still growing in that aspect. And, and we hope and encourage. That's part of one of our main goals, you know, as a, as a church, is that we want to continually develop people that are going to grow in these areas of leadership. Um, and, and will help more and more people come to know Christ, and especially um, through this discipleship avenue. So, And we talked about it in the involvement episode uh, at, at good length, just about the plethora of opportunities that we have here at Hearing Christian Church, where, you know, leadership doesn't mean leading a study. You know, leadership means leading, right? I mean, uh, it could be any number of ways, whether it's, you know, out in the garden or whether it's with our youth or whether it's, with, you know, being in the, in the kitchen making food for, you know, for the Wednesday night. Whatever the case may be, there's so many opportunities to, to be a leader in those forms of discipleship and fellowship. And I think, you know, that that's something that um, 
you know, we kind of, again, get stuck in these ruts. And like you say, like the idea of like checklists of, you know, checking off all these different boxes. And we, we box ourselves in, in in terms of what our understanding of what discipleship is and what our understanding of what leadership is. And so, um, you know, having all these different opportunities that we have here, here in Christian Church is just we're very blessed to have those opportunities and very blessed, blessed to have uh, the team that we have here with you guys. And, uh, and uh, we, we extend our thank you. Yeah, uh, I just want to conclude with saying uh, thanks Thanks for having us on, Matt, and, and for the people that are listening, um, dive into the Word and, and read the Gospels, read what Jesus teaches, and read what He does, and just imitate Him. Yeah, it, it's just, again, I, I find it so fitting that we're here three days after Easter Sunday talking about this, because... You know, the Bible doesn't end with the gospel, right? I mean, it doesn't end with uh, the book of John. It continues on, and, and uh, you know, that's, again, what we're called to do, is to continue on. Um, exactly, exactly. Praise God, right? So, so, yeah, anybody else have anything to add, anything pressing? Well, Brad, maybe you can kind of give us an idea of what's going on here for the next couple of weeks here at Hearing Christian Church. Sure, the... Uh I guess just with uh, the discipleship, that kind of just what we said at the end there, it never ends. Just because you've discipled somebody and now they're walking the path, uh, hey, there's somebody else that's not. And so uh, I would just uh, con- just continue. If, if you do feel like you have to do the checklist list, which Luke told you not to do, um, there's, a, there's the box that says, do it again. <laughs> so, Find somebody else and, and keep going. So, but yeah, things coming up in the church. Uh, we're excited about uh, this. Some things coming up with uh, our youth and with uh, just the life of the church. Um, we've, we're working on some discipleship groups uh, that uh, we're we're getting some leaders trained up for. Um, our leadership team is uh, is actually going to a leadership training here at the at the end of next week. So that's exciting for us. And uh, just with the. The summer things and, and things coming up at um, you know a couple months down the road with camps. So if you're if you've got a kid uh, wanting to go to camp from fifth grade through uh, senior in high school, uh, make sure to get them signed up for camp. Uh, we're looking at uh, the possibilities of of keeping Wednesday nights going through May, a- April and May, and so that's exciting. And uh, again, with all of those things comes the, the need for help and the need for people wanting to disciple these these students and. Um, these young lives. Uh, we've got uh, a senior banquet. We, we do a recognition for our high school seniors every year, and so that's coming up at the end of April here. And it's so just a, a little tribute to those that have went through the, the youth ministry programs and, and probably even some of them their whole lives here at Huron Christian Church. So I want to recognize them. And uh, so just be on the lookout. Keep looking at the announcements. I uh, hope you can continue to join us on Sundays and, and be a part of those things that we've been talking about today. Yeah, and the the exciting thing is is that you know we hope to be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, as far as uh, you know, as more of our, more and more of our community gets vaccinated, you know, we we uh, hope to have more people here uh, at the church. I know that we're doing uh, everything that we can to make sure that we're providing a, a safe environment for anybody who wants to come and worship. Of course, we we do have our our live stream as well every Sunday, and if we hold events, you know, we generally are pretty good about putting those up there as well. Uh, And so uh, we really, I I think, you know, on Easter Sunday, uh, we had quite a large crowd for the, at least the late service. Uh, And so, you know, the the fact that, uh, you know, seeing all those people was, was nice to see, you know, you're starting to see people that you haven't seen for a while, starting to get back out. And what better time then to start working on ourselves and working on uh, our discipleship to others and our fellowship than than now, right? I mean, we've we've been well almost a year uh, now with with very limited fellowship, very limited opportunities to have those conversations and have those get-togethers. And now that we can, uh, we have a lot to talk about and we have a lot to work on. And so hopefully this episode can can help some of us with that, and we can take some of your uh, your tips and pointers, Luke, and, and take those and, and uh, provide some real-world application, because that's really, you know, why we have this podcast, is to help you, help everybody here grow, uh, grow in their faith and, and maybe provide that information to you in just a little bit of a different way, and hopefully... Uh, it sticks and and uh, grows in you, and you can go out and uh, uh, 
cultivate that out in the world. And so, uh, again, we hope that you've enjoyed the podcast. And uh, with that, I think we'll have Al lead us in prayer and talk to you next time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for just uh, being with us and being our God and for the love that you had for us by sending your son Jesus um, to give us hope and uh, um, give us the, the way to be able to come back to you and uh, to live with you forever. Lord, I pray for our body here. I pray that you continue to encourage us um, in our ways of growing um, to be more and more like your son, Jesus. And I'm grateful for the team that we have here and the many families that are um, participating um, in this body to, to encourage each other and to help each other grow as well. And Lord, I pray that you just continue to bring more and more and, and uh, continue to work in our influence here uh, that we might reach this community for you. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Al. That has been the fifth episode of the Huron Christian Church podcast. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time.